The MCAD co-designer extension gives users the ability to define RigidFlex PCB geometry from the mechanical side. To get started, first you need to configure a set of PCB layers in the Layer Stack Manager tab and define at least one rigid and one flexible stack. For the next step, you need to place a split line on your PCB and define rigid and flex regions. After that, the board can be pushed to the mechanical engineer by using the MCAD co-designer panel. After receiving the board, the mechanical engineer should place it in the device assembly. We recommend mating the board with the enclosure by using planes as part of the assembly process. The reasoning for this is by accepting future board changes from Altium Designer, the board geometry can be rebuilt. As a result, even if the old mates become incorrect, the mates to the planes will not be affected. Take a look at the structure of the PCB assembly. Compared to a usual board, there are several extrusion areas for rigid and flexible regions. They have the same names that were set in Altium Designer when they were defined. The rigid and flexible sections use a single master sketch with stacked split lines. All changes to the board geometry must be reflected in this sketch. To change the board geometry, start editing the sketch. First, remove the constraint anchors for the auto-generated outer lines of the sketch. Once that is complete, you will be free to define the shape of the board within the context of the device. It is worth noting a not so obvious feature related to the region split line. If you change the sketch adjacent to the split line, it is recommended to remove the old line and draw a new split line in the same place. We will see a few examples of this in this video. After changing the master sketch, errors may appear in the board assembly caused by a loss of board edge references as a result of rebuilding the board geometry. The first thing we see is the lack of a visible flex part of the board. To fix this error, you have to go to the extrusion properties for that section. Here, you need to delete the reference to the previous segment of the master sketch and to find a new segment by drawing it, after which the flex segment will appear in the workspace. The next error is related to the conversion of the flexible part to sheet metal. SolidWorks doesn't have an exact analog for the flex part of the board, so it converts it to sheet metal. To correct this error, you'll need to select the correct face of the flex portion from within SolidWorks so the bend fold will appear properly when it is converted to sheet metal. We recommend specifying the bottom edge of the flex segment since the initial bend was created there. Now let's fix the line of the initial bend and then define the bend itself to fit the enclosure. The bend line is placed as part of the sketch, which can be edited. You can delete the original line, draw a new one, and give it the desired dimensions. After defining the bend line, let's set up the bend itself. To do this, we go to the bend's properties. Here we can specify the angle of the bend and its radius. You may also get a coordinate system error, which is nothing to worry about. The coordinate system is used to match the assembly of components placed on the rigid region of the board. If you get an error like this, simply push the board to Altium Designer, accept the changes, and then push the board back to your MCAD tool and accept it. This will resolve the error. Now let's continue shaping the geometry of the PCB and create a new bend. To do this, first select the desired edge of the flex part, create a new sketch on it, and draw a bending line on it in the position you want. After creating the bending line, use the Sketch Bend tool to create the bend itself. When adjusting, specify the desired parameters for the angle and radius of the bend. Now let's add a new rigid part to the board. First, let's hide the rest of the assembly for the sake of convenience. Before adding any new areas to the board, you need to move the rollback bar over all the sketched bend elements to unbend the board assembly back to its previous state to avoid errors. After moving the history bar, start editing the master sketch. As part of the sketch, draw a closed shape which should be adjacent to the previous segments of the board. Set the required dimensions for it. Before leaving the sketch, as before, remove the old split line and draw a new one. To complete this new rigid section, you'll need to extrude this new segment to the same thickness that is specified in the rigid substack of the PCB. This value can be copied from the extrusion properties of the original rigid section. After copying this value, apply it with the extruded boss base command to the desired region of the sketch to get the right thickness. When you finish adding the new part, move the rollback bar to the very bottom of the PCB assembly tree. Now let's add a new flexible region to the PCB. Initially, the process is a repeat of what we did to add a rigid section. 
First, bend the board by moving the rollback bar over all the sketched bend elements. Then start editing the master sketch, defining the shape of the new flexible region. Once again, be sure to delete and redraw the region split line when you finish editing the sketch. The extrusion process for the flexible segment is slightly different from the process for the rigid section. Let's open the extrusion properties for the already existing flex region. Here, in addition to the thickness, we need to consider the offset value from the bottom plane, since in this case, it is placed in the center of the board stack up. Once you have these values, you can start creating a new extrusion. Specify the thickness of the flexible stack and set the offset to the appropriate value. After that, you should disable the Merge Results option and apply the operation. Since sheet metal is used to define flex regions, the extrusion must be converted to sheet metal. To do this, use the Convert to Sheet Metal function. Specify a new flex area and apply the operation. The last step for the flex region is to combine it with the rest of the PCB. To do this, use the command Insert Features Combine. Select the new flex segment, select the remaining sections of the PCB, and apply changes. After that, return the rollback bar to the bottom of the PCB assembly tree. You can also add mounting holes to the board. To do this, first move the rollback bar back over all the sketched bend elements. Then use the hole wizard to place holes of the desired diameter at the required places on the board. Once that is done, return the rollback bar to its original position. You can also create cutouts on a PCB from the MCAD side as well. To create a cutout, first unfold the board. After that, create a new sketch on the desired face with the dimensions you want and apply the extruded cut operation to it. After completing the cut, fold the board back to its previous position. Once the PCB geometry has been defined, push the board back to the electrical engineer so it can be further edited in Ultium Designer. After the push, the electrical engineer can see the new changes, which can be previewed before accepting. For all the sections that the mechanical engineer has created and defined, the desired substacks have been automatically generated. You might also notice that the bend radius value is slightly different from the radius that has been set by the mechanical engineer. This is due to the fact that Altium Designer calculates the bend radius along the center line, unlike the mechanical CAD tool, which calculates the radius along the inner edge. MCAD Co-Designer automatically recalculated and specified the new correct radius value. Also, all mounting holes, cutouts, and bend properties have been transferred, and the electrical engineer can continue their work with the correct board configuration. Now let's push the board back to the mechanical engineer to fix the coordinate system error. Let's switch back to the MCAD tool and accept the changes from the ECAD side. The flexible regions of the board now have their specific color, and the coordinate system error has disappeared. The board fits in the device assembly, and there are no issues with mating the board to the rest of the assembly.